Welcome to Shark Week on Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Mega Shark versus Crocosaurus. What a load of crocs. So bad, so bad. Directed by Christopher Ray, this movie's about a giant shark and a giant crocodile doing battle. Because of this, the military have to step in before they destroy any of the cities. We had to take 2020 off of Shark Week and it saddens us. So the only way to bring Shark Week back is somebody familiar with sharks. It's Mitch from the channel Screaming Shark. If you are unfamiliar, check out the links in the description. Subscribe to his channel. He's got his own different takes on things. <laughs> Hey. I ship you son of a bitch! What do we like about this movie? I'm gonna be honest, like an old school asylum movie, they use a lot more practical things. I mean, there's terrible CG in this, but the practical sets that they did have, like at the interior of a helicopter, we had the interior of submarines, they looked pretty solid to me. You mean to tell me you loved the awesome bars that they had as well. I love the bars. <laughs> I want to go to a little tiki hut, order some Jack Daniels, pay with my watch, and walk out <laughs> with the whole bottle. Why do you think I don't have watches? I got a feeling this whiskey's gonna cost me. The fact that we have Jaleel White, AKA Urkel, for you Family Matters fans out there. Bend your knees and stick out your pelvis. I'm telling you, baby, it's better than Elvis. As our main character, I loved him because- okay, like, okay, pump the brakes. I don't think he's the main character. I don't think there is a main character. Fair. It's a yeah. bunch of side characters. You know, if I increase the frequency by just five megahertz, I can create a more consistent sound velocity. Right. I like him too, I'm with Lyle. Terry was fantastic. So why are you on my shit? Hunt, find, and kill the Megalodon. Sir. And if there's any ship in a movie, whether it's in space or underwater, we got Richard Ricardo hanging out, holding a cigar that he never smokes the entire film. This is a Gurkha Black Dragon, the most expensive cigar in the world. Now I promised myself as soon as we killed this creature that I would fire this up and smoke it. The main lady. The Hutch one Hutchinson? Hutchinson. Special Agent Hutchinson. She was pretty good. She was uh, kind of pretty bossy, but you got to be in that kind of position, especially when you're working with people like the headhunter there, who is pretty ignorant. This croc is not your trophy. She was the Nick Fury. You and a few other survivors have a story to tell. Yeah, she was trying to assemble her own team of special agents, while also trying to make a buck for herself because she wasn't trying to pay anybody. There's no pay, and you start now. Ready? Yes. I didn't mind Nigel's character. Like, he was pretty badass. What kind of person jumps into the mouth of a giant crocodile to tranquilize it? And he didn't <laughs> willingly do that. If I just had tranks and was inside of a giant crocodile, yeah, I guess I'd stab it with whatever I had. He looks badass by proxy. He, but I will say, the guy's a fucking asshole because he pulled guns on children. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name, boy? They were poking him on the beach. Yeah, well, I've been poked while I've been sleeping, and I've never woke up and stuck a gun in someone's face. He was going to do it as a joke. Well, it doesn't matter. Live rounds in it. Plus, he was holding the hammer forward so he wasn't cocking it back. He was being safe. Those kids are scarred for life. Not the one. The one went back for the double tap. But he's such a pushover. He was basically making no money off of getting this croc, but that was his whole goal. And he was like, you know what? I'll just help you out. Why not? He wanted some R&R, &R, and well, he ain't getting it. Where are we going? Back to your place for a little R&R? &R? You can go willingly or reluctantly. Your choice. I like the 10% guy. This is gonna cost Nigel 50%. 50? I want at least 10. I want my 10%. Yeah, whatever. The guy with the dreadlocks and the nice little hat, constantly making sure that he's gonna get his 10% of the cut. My 10%. I want my 10%. Shut up. 10%. I kind of like that guy. I wish it was in it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Potentially, he could be played by the Zombies director, Glenn Miller. Anything goes wrong, I'll make sure you get your 10%. I like the idea of a giant shark taking on a giant crocodile. I mean, they did have some nice, like, rolling moments under the water. It didn't live up to my expectations, but I was okay with what we saw. So tell me, am I gonna get to smoke my black dragon? Mitch, should we go to our dislikes? Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to, because I didn't really like much about this movie other than just the various actors that we got. Shut it, guys. I will say that some of the visual effects, even though they're bad, they're very charming. Like when we see the scientists next to the egg there, I loved that. As soon as it came up, I wish we had more of that. There's a practical edge to it. We go in there, we get an egg, we bring it back and we're done. Going on those practical effects, I think 
the best moment in this entire film is when our hottie from the Congo, she's like surfing the giant crocodile. That's not practical for the record. But it's still really funny to see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And that's the stuff we want from one of these movies because it's Mega Shark versus Crocosaurus. We know it's gonna be stupid. Let's have some fun with it. And those are the few instances where it was funny. So that's why it's like kind of on the border of likes and dislikes. We're teetering like the girl on the yeah. Crocosaurus here. Exactly. I think the shark just went nuclear. The whole movie, like I've said with a lot of recent Asylum films, the story fucking sucks. Yes, we get it. Shark versus crocodile. The whole movie just slogs on and you don't care about anything. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Asylum is really great at convincing the audience that something is happening when nothing is happening. To execute an arc flash immediately. Sir, I don't think we can do that. This is a direct order from the Chief of Naval Operations. Do it! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. An arc flash. Tell him to prepare for an arc flash. Okay, well, that little CG explosion, it wasn't the climax I was expecting from this heated conversation. This is where Nigel's character suffered the most because he had random outbursts of like screaming at people. Like it's a very different tone and it felt out of place. They missed the crocodile! They missed! You guys missed! I went into this knowing it was gonna be complete crap. I wasn't gonna like it. That's just how these movies are. And I love those little moments where things seemed more exciting than they should be. Well, what you need to do is focus on a 1500 foot pissed off crocodile that's headed up the coast. I would rather watch that than just people being, you know, boring on screen, doing something stupid that we shouldn't be seeing on screen, but at least make it exciting. Also in regards to Nigel freaking out, I thought those scenes were hilarious because it got me right back into the movie because I was a little bit, you know, like, okay, can we just get to the Mega Shark versus the Crocosaurus, the title of the movie? And when those little instances happened, oh my God, I was laughing my ass off. And that's a big issue they have in this film is we do not have a Mega Shark versus a Crocosaurus. It's well, just- Well, okay, we, we do. The we, yin and the yang. But we don't really get the battles that you would want. You don't even know if your bowls are gonna work out that do you? And the fact that we have thousands of little mini crocs, like we're doing Godzilla 19, like 98 here or whatever, you have the potential of little crocodiles taking on like a giant shark. And we don't get it. There's no logic to these movies. You could have had those baby crocodiles doing something. They set it up. It is to be expected though. We completely understand that there's gonna be some production issues. There's gonna be some bad acting and the story is gonna mean basically nothing. But the problem with this, I think, was at least 60% of the film is just people talking. And it's not very interesting. I can't bring her back, but we can't go kill this monster. I really wish we got more kills in this movie. Most of them were off screen, so that was kind of like, oh, okay, there could have been something there. And I think there was one on screen kill with that guy just fishing on the rocks, minding his own business. <laughs> I don't even think he caught anything that day. The rest of the kills were just like a whole ship of 2,200 people dead. Even the people that we established, like the guy with the dreads. All of them died through explosion. Might I add, we did not have an actual marine biologist. Urkel was as close as it came, no. but we, we had, had Uma Thurman. We had the Uma Thurman. No, well, Uma, she got gobbled. Uma ran the mine. Mm. But egg specialist, <gasps> yeah. she was in. But you need that like person there to explain everything. Like Urkel was the one who was explaining the shark stuff, but like his specialty was like sonar. It repels the shark, sound. This could change everything. Whoa! Oh, he like, was our marine biologist. The hydrospheres. Or the megahertz. Megasaurus. What do you mean? Mega shark. He, he was a mega programmer, by the way. He was screwing on those micro. Oh, yeah, he was changing codes. I've been focused on repelling the sharks with my hydrosonic spheres, and now the Admiral wants me to, to lure them in. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I didn't hate this movie, to be honest. I knew exactly what we were getting into. It was a shark versus a big crocodile. Why not? I expected exactly what we got. However, I wasn't as engaged with our characters, but I did like seeing some familiar faces. They somehow used a lot more practical sets than I expected, and the use of CG, well, still terrible, was better than some of their more recent work. 
I did wish that we had more shark on crocodile action, as I'm sure every single person will. I did enjoy watching it, but it's not very good. But anyway, I'm giving this two heat detecting binoculars out of five. This is amazing. Heat sensing. Look, fully knew what I was getting into. Mega shark versus crocosaurus. It's not gonna be a good movie. This is gonna be a movie that you're gonna wanna watch with your friends. While this provided some good scenes for that, just the rest of the movie was a little bit uneventful. A lot of talking, a lot of explaining. Did I have fun? Yeah, kind of, but you have to watch this with friends. If you're watching this by yourself, you're gonna have a miserable time. So I'm giving this a one and a half, Bob Vance being eaten by a crocosaurus out of five. It's to no surprise how terrible this film was. I knew exactly what I was getting into when it's an asylum film. And the fact that it's the Mega Shark series, you know that the Mega Shark and whoever the Mega Shark is facing is not gonna be the dominant focus of the film. There's a whole other plot that happens and most of the time, that plot is pretty boring. I did, however, enjoy our cast, but at the end of the day, the story sucked. And I could look past all the really bad special effects and everything that they're doing there because that's the charm. But this was a very weak film for me. I just want these two giant beasts going head to head with each other instead of just dancing underwater in a circle. So I would not recommend this movie. And with that being said, I'm gonna give this film one dual wielding somersault out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, links are in the description. And if you want to check out Screaming Shark from Mitch, also linked in the description. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with everything Bloodbath and Beyond. And it's fucking Shark Week, baby. We've got eight videos. I don't know how we're gonna make it. I can just imagine what's to come. Stick with us. And you're not getting 10%.